you've got to hand it to Stern. They're doing very, very well at the moment. In fact, I think their timing is impeccable with, with almost everything that they've done. I remember thinking this when Foo Fighters was released. And I think I, I might have my timing wrong. Maybe it's my memory playing tricks on me here. But it felt to me that, that possibly around the same time, possibly Godfather was around the time, maybe even Scooby-Doo. It, it felt it felt like there had been some announcements around that time, particularly Godfather. Now, I, I know Godfather isn't everybody's favourite game. I quite like it, actually. I've, I've been lucky enough to have it here. I quite enjoyed it. I think I enjoyed it a lot more than most. But I think it was anticipated. People were, were wondering what it was going to be like. There was an excitement building towards it. And if my memory serves me correctly, I think Foo Fighters, they just got in sort of a week before. And I very much felt that that had probably hurt Jersey Jack sales quite a bit. So I thought the timing was really good on that. Fast forward to very recently with the Uncanny X-Men and the release on that. And, and you've got to separate whatever you think about the reveal and whatever you think about the live. Sorry, it wasn't the reveal. It's the live stream. And forget who's got the better production quality and, and that sort of stuff. I'm talking about the time in here. The fact that they managed to squeeze that out a week before Jersey Jack did with Avatar, I thought was pretty smart, really. I, I thought the timing of it was really, really good. So for them to follow that up so quickly with this Metallica remaster, this, this reboot of Metallica, which is Spike 2 and not Spike 3, by the way, which is the right decision, I think. I, I think, again, they've, they've got their timing really, really spot on because they've managed to sandwich Alice and, if you pardon the expression, um, but it's an adult version of Alice, of course. Uh, they've managed to sandwich Alice and Avatar between Metallica and Uncanny X-Men. And I think it's I think it's quite smart, actually. And I think their timing's really good. And I think I think they've upped their game. Because competition is good uh, in, in in anything. Competition is good. Uh, one one pinball company's no good. You know, one 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 of anything is is not good at all. And I think some of the other companies maybe pushing the envelope, I think has made them up their game. I think I, I certainly feel looking at this Metallica, there are things on there that probably they didn't need to be on there. They probably would have got away without putting them on, possibly. Uh, we'll uh, take the skulls. We'll, we'll, we'll get into it in a second. I've, I've got a bit of B-roll footage. I've basically stolen uh, Stern's video. Um, so um, apologies. Hey, then they're not they're not going to care. I'm, I'm talking about their game. But um, the skulls, the RGB skulls that are on the slingshot plastics. I don't think they needed to do that. But I think this is the level that other companies have have taken it up to. Alice would be a good example as you look at look at the detail that, that Jersey Jack maybe put into theirs. Look at what Spooky are doing, and look at these you know amazing games. Maybe even the sculpts in Labyrinth. Look at these amazing games that are a lot's been put into them. I think Stern have maybe had a look and thought, okay, we've got to up their game. Even and I know this this Metallica is only in a, a premium and a limited edition. But I do feel even the pro version of the Uncanny X-Men was probably a little more in there than ordinarily it might be in, in some games. So I think they've probably taken note of the toys, the lighting, the sound, a lot of the stuff that's in a lot of the other games, and they've probably felt they've got to up their game. And this does not look like a like it's been made on a shoestring. It, I look at this Metallica and I think they've done that game justice. Now, I've got to hold my hands up here. I am not a fan of, of Metallica as a band. It's not, it's not my kind of music. But even I look at this and I'm tempted to get one. And I'm not going to sit here and pretend to you that I think it's the best game I've ever seen. As I say, that would be disingenuous. I said before, you'll know when I really like a game because I'll get one. If you can see it, 
Ooh, I'm wrong way. It's a Jaws. There's a Jaws premium just set behind me. Lots of videos, lots of content to come on that. Uh, brilliant game. Absolutely brilliant game, by the way. But I have three of my friends have Metallica, like the original, the original version. The um, was it on? What have, it might have been on Spike one. I, I, in all honesty, I don't know. It had the um, had the dot matrix displayed in them. All three of them have said they're going to sell their old Metallica and buy one of these new ones. They're in, and that's quite impressive, isn't it? I mean, that is impressive. I'm thinking, would would I do the same? I probably would. I probably would if a new Lord of the Rings came out and it looked like they had kept the same layout, but maybe, you know, they still had all the old models on there, but, but more models in and you had better movie footage and, and there was just more stuff in there because there are 20 songs in this Metallica, apparently, um, some of which are, are newer, newer songs. I think I'd probably, get, I'd probably be tempted to buy that new Lord of the Rings. Um. They're not. They're not going to do one. They, they won't get the licensing for it. So I'm, I'm more than happy with my old Lord of the Rings, by the way. But I think for for three people to do that, like the only three people I've spoken to about Metallica and about this sort of remastered, revamped version, for all three of them to say we're going to get the new one, it's incredible by Stern. Really, it's that they've they've all said it's a must-have, and. A lot of the a lot of the talk recently has been about quite possibly the pinball market, particularly the used market, the second hand market is in is in the doldrums. Maybe there's not enough, as many games being bought and sold as there were. Well, I know this much. A lot of people went in on Uncanny Uncanny X-Men and a lot of people are in on this Metallica. So I think it probably goes to show. If you get the right game, and if a manufacturer can find the right title, then quite possibly you're going to be in a situation where people will buy your game. What that's going to do to um, to me, I think the market's going to be flooded with the original um, Metallicas. Look, the, the shots are the same. Uh, it's, it's that John Borg layout. Apparently, there was a lot of talk. Let me just present a little bit of video here, and we'll have a little uh, a little talk a little talk about it. Um, I mean, it's a gorgeous looking game. I think they've got the artwork. They've done that really well. You can see it's reminding me of when I'm looking at that screen there. They've got some concert footage, but certainly some of the, the animations that are on there and some of the fonts and, and some of the stuff. There's, there's George there talking about it. And um, some of the stuff that's been used on there sort of reminded me a little bit of Aerosmith, if you like, which I thought was a, a fantastic game. It's got the expression lighting. Apparently, there was a lot of talk about about making some of the mechanisms more robust, stronger. You've got some wire forms on there. Uh, you've got, they've re-sculpted the hammer, which you saw um, coming down there. They've got sp improved, uh, new, all new Sparky, uh, an ultra ultraviolet version. So they, they've really used some UV uh, quite well in this game. And I'm I just wondering if that's going to be something we're going to see more and more, because actually, if you think of the last three releases pinball wise which are avatar alice well, announcements not releases announcements whatever you want to call it and now metallica they're all using uv so i wonder if that's going to become more prominent there's john borg i think this is i've only played this game three times i think the first game i ever had was really good i really enjoyed it i'm not a fan of the music so it's one of those ones that, that's, that has to grow on me but I, I think, you know, possibly some might say this is Borg's best game. It's packed. It's absolutely packed. I love a drop target. I really do. Um, there's going to be people that know this game backwards anyway, who are probably just going to love this. Um, but I do look at it. I think it is packed with toys. Look at that magnet. There's the Sparky. That's a great toy. That's a great toy. I'm, I'm glad there would have been a time, I think, looking at Stern at their worst when stern have been at their worst there's that's a new metal metallica sign behind that by the way when they had very much the flat plastics you'll you'll know that look at your um iron maiden pro look at your 
Deadpool Pro. They have the flat plastics. They, they look awful. And, and this is what I think is probably happening now. I know this is not. there's not a pro version of this game. I think because of everything that all the other companies are doing, Stern can't do that. They can't produce these flat plastics. They're going to have to produce some moulds, some sculpts, which I think is why you saw them boasting so much about the chum bucket. On Jaws. I think you probably saw it on Bond when they had the Aston Martin there. I think had Bond have been made two years prior to that, they probably wouldn't have done that because they would have got away with it. And that's why I think competition is good. And I think now what you're seeing here with this game is a version of a game from Stern, which is just seems to be packed and, and has everything on it. Things that were on the original, obviously it had a, like a different Sparky, didn't it, on, on the previous one. Of course, it had the drop targets, it had the, the snake. But um, as, I, as I mentioned, I just don't think they would have had to have done things like the other sculpts on there. And, and I think this is probably the culmination of, of a lot of their good work and a lot of their creative thinking. You've got the LE and the premium there. The premium are quite, look, the premium is not, obviously not as good as the LE. But in terms of the artwork, and apparently a lot of the artists that they've 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 used an artist who is I, I don't know the guy's name, but they've used an artist who is frequently uh, used, I guess, for album designs, album cover designs by the band. So they've used a band's artist. So you've got that continuity of look, that continuity of design, which I think is re really really good um, for them. If you're into the band, you're going to want to get this. So the the LE looks better. But I think there's enough there's enough similarity and enough difference, if that makes sense. So there's a continuity between the LE and the premium, but there's enough difference to warrant you wanting to buy the LE. But I think in terms of the premium, I quite like the green on it. So I think if you're going to mod that, maybe you're going to get that armor powder coated or something. You might get that done in the green or there's there's enough there for you to to make that your own, for you to personalize that game. Um, friend, friend, friend of mine. Uh, I don't know if it's. Uh, I don't, don't want to say who it is actually at the moment, just in case. Um, but he went in on the LE, and I think he he paid his deposit for the LE from from Pimble Heaven. By the way, Pimble Heaven. There you go, a channel sponsor. He put his deposit down on the LE, and then he got quite nervous today. He was nervous about this release, nervous about the unveiling. And I said to him, I think you've probably got nothing to worry about, really, because they're not going to throw away a tried and tested formula. Got the, the wonderful Lyman Sheets code there. They're not going to throw that out, are they? You're not going to throw out these great shots, possibly Borg's best design. They're only going to be adding to it. So I was confident. I said, I think this is not like a FOMO of buying blind. This is, I think you're onto a bit of a sure thing here. <laughs> um and so it's proven, and I've spoken to him since. He's delighted. He, he cannot wait to get this game. And just in terms of the Spike 2 and the Spike 3, it was rumoured quite possibly that this title might have been the Spike 3. I, I think they've made the right decision here. Whatever Spike 3 is, I think it was almost, it's almost a wasted bullet using it on Metallica because Spike 2 already improves Metallica. It already does. Now, that's subjective. Okay, let's let's use a different word rather improves. I mean, people are very happy with Metallica. And by the way, you've basically got the same shots there and you probably have more or less got the same game. So I'm not sure everyone needs to rush out and sell their Metallica, by the way. But I think let's forget improve. Let's use the word modernize rather than improve. If the idea is to modernize Metallica, then Spike 2 does that just fine. They've got footage in there, uh, concert footage. They've got animations. They've got extra songs. A thousand new call-outs, which have been done by the band, apparently. Um, I, I think I think that's pretty cool. And I, I can't... You know that thing buyer's regret? You ever had... You must have had it. You probably have. If you're into pinball, you ever got a game and then you get it here, you get it back home and you think, oh, it's not as great as I thought. I, I shouldn't have done that. Buyer's remorse. Is that it's not remorse, it's remorse rather than regret, isn't it? Um, I'm sure there's plenty of us have had it. You spend a lot of money on a pinball machine. You think, I don't like this, I'm not getting on with this. I don't think that's a factor here. I think anybody that is spending on 
one of these premiums or one of these limited editions. No one's going to do it blind. Most people have played Metallica before. They know what they're getting into. You've, you've got the code. You're not going to be waiting for a lot of code updates, are you? Like, like it's a brand new game. It's already going to be a really, really high level. I'm sure they'll add things to it. You've got your insider connected. There's going to be different layers and different things that they're going to do with this game. But I think it's a sure thing. I really do. I don't think you're going to have that buyer's remorse. I think you're going to get the game and it's going to have everything that you previously loved from your old Metallica and more besides. And there seems to be a lot of talk. Obviously, I muted that promotional video that you just watched. A lot of talk about reliability and upgrading and making the mechanisms more robust. So I've never owned one. I don't know if that was me listening to that. I'm I'm wondering how unreliable that game was. Maybe I got that wrong. Maybe it wasn't an unreliable game. But it does lead me to believe that this one will be really well built. And and let's be fair that you know Stern make the most reliable games they they absolutely do that's why you'll see so many of them on location and they just require less less tweaking i say that now as i'm waiting as i'm getting air balls air balls galore off that um that track where the uh, where the shark's fin is but but i don't mind but we, we get it sorted by and large by and large they have very very reliable games but i, I felt for for some time that that they just that they can scrimp and they can be a little bit cheap. Things like the end stops, things like the the balls that were they just weren't. They, they, they were small things, small things that incrementally probably didn't make much of a difference to them. Small parts that probably would have cost a a pound, a dollar, what whatever, and things that wouldn't have cost much and they wouldn't put them in there. I, I am looking now at what they've done recently and I just I just think they've upped their game as I understand it Jack Danger got really pushed for a bigger bill of materials for uh, Uncanny X-Men it showed this is this is a good time this is a really really good time to be involved in pinball really is and um, I'm, I'm really surprised that they've they've launched this so soon after Uncanny X-Men and um, it's giving people some interesting choices really is uh but yeah I mean look I, I think Overall, well done. Well, well done. Well done, Stern, on, on this one. And um, again, once again, we're sort of blessed with a time in, in pinball where there's just a lot of games coming out and you've got a lot of choice. And maybe this one isn't for you. I, I As I mentioned, I, I, I probably won't get this game. I don't want to sit here and pretend that I think it's the best game that I've ever seen. It's not. It's not. But I think Stern's timing is good. And I think for some people and people that love Metallica, this may well be the best game. A lot of people that I know that have got Metallicas have kept it as well. While when other things have left their collections, they've kept the Metallica. So I think that probably says quite a lot about the last ability of a game. And good good shots, good layout by John Borg and, and probably a genius code by Lyman Sheets, which I don't know. I've not explored it. I, I, <laughs> hey, you never know. Maybe I'll end up picking up a secondhand Metallica for, for a tenner or something. 